Hello, I'm Tim McPherson from Sussex Angling Media and I'm here on the Ouse at Denton Island on a beautiful July morning. Um, why am I here? Well, uh, we're going mullet fishing today. The National um, Mullet Club and the Angling Trust, the Sussex Marine Region of the Angling Trust, have teamed up uh, and invited uh, Angling Trust members to come down and learn a little bit about how to catch mullet. We've got David Mitchell from the Angling Trust here, who is the Marine uh, Campaigns Manager for the Angling Trust nationally, just to uh, talk to us a little bit about what, um, you know, what's involved here. So why are we doing this? Uh, we're doing this because uh, we set up a Sussex Marine region yeah. of the Angling Trust um, and we really wanted to provide some um, benefits to our Angling Trust yeah. members, um, you know, in terms of actually going fishing and giving them, um, giving them a, go a good day out. And uh, the National Mullet Club are uh, members of the, of the Angling Trust and we thought why not marry the two together, promote the Mullet Club, um, provide Angling Trust members in Sussex. Uh, with some actual some some fishing and some some set kind of skill sessions, and also to try and cross over. So we we've invited our course and game and sea anglers yeah. to try and, uh, uh, and 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 learn a bit more about how to catch the elusive mullet. And then in future we hope to do similar events, um, bass fishing or a crossover. Try and get sea anglers to try some kind of yeah. um, course fishing. Um, mix it up a little bit and actually provide uh, our members with the opportunity to meet other members and uh, and to do a bit of fishing and learn learn something yeah. new. Okay. Everyone, and thanks a lot yeah, for thanks. coming along today. Thank you. And uh, th this is a, a sort of new initiative that um, that we've come up with for members, and we've set up this new Sussex Marine Region, um, and we wanted to try and provide some benefits to Angling Trust members in terms of actually you know, going. Fishing and, 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 and learning some new stuff and, and actually crossing over and doing some different sorts of fishing. National Mullet Club Chairman Steve Smith started off the day by giving a demonstration of baiting up, tackling up and really how to ground bait to get the best out of catching these fish. Liquidised bread that was put in the uh, just, just take a cheap loaf from uh, your supermarket, chuck it in the liquidizer. Try and avoid <laughs> too many large sized pieces because they float away and they'll actually attract swans and ducks and other sort of uh, wild fowl that are a bit of a nuisance. So what I've got here is some more solid bait, suitable for ground bait, suitable for the feeder. This is soaked bread and then mixed brown and white crumb until you get a consistency that doesn't quite stick to your hand all right so that's the that's a good consistency that you I've got a ball there that will dissolve quickly in the in the current um, and so I can just simply wrap that round there squeeze that round there and if I want I can actually make good use of the combined things by simply rolling this into here which will create a kind of shower effect when that hits the water the crumbs will come off there now the most important success factor um, is, is actually uh, your hook bait and I've got myself a uh, fresh loaf here. So let's just look at this for the moment because this is, this is the difference between success and failure. I usually grab, I leave it in the, in the bag because we don't want it drying out in conditions like this. Grab yourself a piece like that. There are lots of, lots of different theories about how you can put this on here but we just grab ourselves, untangle the hook here, and we grab ourselves a piece of bread. Right, here we are. Right, now, there are different ways of doing this, but what I, I tend to do, just lick one side of it, lay the hook on the top like that, okay, and now we're going to wrap that round that in a kind of Swiss rolly, kind of figure there and pinch somewhere above the eye okay and that will stay on and with a little bit of buoyancy if you imagine that lying on the bottom that will sort of be flapping around somewhere just above the ground bait itself the of the shorter hook length is that the bait isn't that far away from the ball of um, the ball oh. of what we've got here mm. there are other methods but this is the this kind of swiss rolly method where you roll the bread into it and pinch is very much uh, the way to start, to be honest with you. We can get very flat and very cute, but that'll, uh, that'll, that'll do us for now. So you're not, you're, there's no weight, it's just 
Uh, no, that was, that was the frame feeder, which did have a lead weight in it. Oh, I see. That's yeah, so that, yeah, that's right. that's right. Now, with one of these open feeders, you can obviously pack that just with this loose crumb. So right. you, you take a handful of that and stuff that right. in there when you cast it out. Right. And uh, obviously, you know, the skills in the way, how much you pack it. If you pack it too tight, it won't come out at all. If you don't pack it properly, it will fly out when you cast it. And then you're, um, and, th and then you're there. So, so this is now a point where, when I untangle this, we'll be looking to, uh, we'll be looking to cast this out. Right. So that's, uh, that's nearly ready to go. We've got the tripod set up here. Five pound fluoro carbon on those hook lengths, and um, you can fish with a main line that's six or eight if it's particularly snaggy. And all we're going to do now is we're just going to flop it down here. That's we can obviously we can obviously supplement that with a small hole ground bait that we can just. And that ground bait will get caught in the floating bladder rack. That's the key of this. You see, it all, it, you chuck it out there, it just, you know, your, your ground bait is up there. But if you're using this kind of stuff, this kind of arrangement, then a lot of it hangs around in between the bladder rack, which obviously obstructs the flow anyway. Um, and, it, and the mullet clearly really know that. What was amazing is after he cast out, he barely turned round and he caught a fish almost straight away. We did actually see a shoal of fish uh, moseying around in the shallows before he did that, but nonetheless it was very unexpected and a good bit of luck for him and for everybody else. It's fighting hard, isn't it? Yeah, they go well, don't they? Look at the bend in that rod. The fish is only a pound. The fish is only a pound and a half. Look at that. Look at the bend in there. Look at that. That is just amazing. There's a job. I can't see it. Well, there's nothing like an instructor catching a fish to uh, give us all a bit of confidence, don't you think? The more I fish, the luckier I get. No, he's not. He's trying to get this damn thing in. Oh, there he is. Look. Beautiful. Look at that. It's all right. I'll get in your way. It's all right. Hey, I'll just get lucky. I'll come down here. What banana? Hey. Fantastic. There you go. A mullet. We have a mullet on the bank. Right. What a beauty. Look at it. Yeah, they're out for us. It's a middle star. This is, I'll wet my hands on the net before I uh, handle the fish. This is a thick lit mullet. You can see the lower jaw is a kind of W shape, all right? Yeah. That W shape on the lower jaw is a classic thick lip. If you've got one of those, and you can see we're beautifully hooked right in the top lip here, and uh, that should, he says, that should just pop out if we can, if we can. Yes, I'm yeah, yeah. I'm also yeah. Forceps. yeah, if you've got some forceps, yeah. that'll be great. I'll just go. Uh, Flavor, but also, more importantly, they concentrate the toxins from the anti-fouling paint that they suck off the bottom of the boat. Oh, do they? Oh, right, yeah. Do they? No, they do. Oh, so you don't want to eat them? Well, 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 if you catch them off the <laughs> well, that's definitely what you think. Look. It's, um, it's looking at 210, I'd reckon, for that. How old would that fish be, Steve? Uh, that fish will be um, six or seven years old. I'm Simon, Simon Pickles from the Mullet Club. I, I edit the journal, in fact. Oh, really? Every six, oh, right. every six months we have a journal that comes right. out. OK. And what, what, um, tell me about the, the National Mullet Club. Why, uh, why is it and why should people join it? Well, I joined it about 
eight, nine years ago, probably like most people who join a club, they want to learn how to catch mullet. As yeah. it's, I live in Sussex, we've got the, the, uh, the estuaries, four estuaries in Sussex, the, the, the Ouse, the Arran, the Ada and the Cookmere. And um, you know, I've often seen big mullet cruising around and wondering how to catch them. So the reason I joined was really to get in with some people that know about how to catch them. And um, probably the first thing I did was join them on the uh, a mullet fishing day. They have about six mullet fishings a day, right. a year, sorry. Um, and the first one I came to was actually here at the Ooze. Do you do regular mullet days? Do yeah, you? there's oh. about six or seven. We've actually got one next weekend here on the Ooze. Oh, really? And that's one of the main attractions, I think, for people. We tend to get about 10, 20 people come yeah. to each one. And, you know, it's about learning to catch yeah. mullet. It's about meeting old friends once you've joined in a while. Yeah. And, um, you know, having, and, you know book, actually booking a day out fishing, yeah. you know, is ahead. It, is it free to join? It is £20 a year, but I mean, you get the journal twice a year, um, there's newsletters four times a year, there's the, the fishings you can yeah, go to, yeah, yeah, yeah. and obviously the club does a lot of work um, supporting you know, conservation around mullet. And it's, it's not just got... Sussex, is it? It's, it's no, not at all. What, what did you come to this today? Why, why did you well, I, I've been fishing for um, 60 years this Christmas, and uh, I've never fished in earnest for mullet. Yeah. And you're an Trust member? Yes. You know, uh, have, you, have you been a member of the Angling Trust since it started? No, no, it? relatively. But in the last few years, I would say, yeah. two or three years. And why did you join? Well, because I think that there's, there's a lot of pressure on angling from all sorts of different yeah. areas. And the more, the more so, um, uh, societies and organisations that there are to, you know, to, to fight our corner, the better. We were just saying how pleased we were with the, the event and the fact that a few people have, have caught, caught fish. Um, fantastic weather and uh, that generally it's been, a, it's, been a, it's been a good event. People have learnt new, new techniques, new tactics um, and also they've got a venue yeah, now that they know um, holds fish um, so they can, they can go away and, um, and make use of the, the, the skills and the knowledge that they've picked up from, from today's session. We'll do another one. That's right. Uh, that, that's right, and I think if we can, uh, you know, start to bust a few of the myths about mullet fishing and uh, demonstrate that sometimes even regular mullet anglers, you know, sit and wait a long time between one fish and another, then that's all part of the uh, realism of the game, really, and uh, bring people into a genuinely new branch of fishing that's different from the coarse side of things and different from the open sea uh, angling or, Absolutely. or yeah. pier fishing for that matter. And I think what's been interesting about today is we've got a good mix. We've got some out and out sea anglers who, who, who you know, might be boat, boat anglers and, and uh, want to try mullet fishing. And we've got some course anglers, out and out course anglers. So this is mix that, that we've got bringing people into different sides of the sport and trying something new, which I think is, you know, it's what the Angling Trust should should yeah. encourage as much as we can after all we're all anglers yeah absolutely and that's a common theme isn't it really and uh, it would have been just great to see something come out on the fly and there's every chance that uh, this is the kind of location where it's uh, very possible in margin everybody who came really enjoyed the event and there were a lot of very experienced anglers there and they all said that they got something new out of the day which is really the point <laughs>